All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about geometric annuities. And so sometimes an annuity or a series of payments will have payments that increase or decrease with every payment period. And this might be by the payer's choice or it might be to adjust for inflation. No matter the reason, we have a way to calculate such annuities where the payments change. And one way that the amount of the payments can change is in a way such that the payments of the annuity form a geometric progression. And that is represented here by the payments on our timeline. We have our first payment of X, but then one payment period later, that payment increases. We have X times one plus R, where R is that rate of inflation or the rate at which your payment is changing per payment period. And in another payment period later, we have X times that quantity one plus R squared. And then that would continue on. We would have that quantity cubed and then to the fourth power and the fifth power and so on until those payments are done being made. So for example, if you started out by making a payment of $100 and you were going to increase the amount of that payment by 3% every payment period, that decimal would be 0 0.03. And so your next payment would be represented by X times one plus R, which would be equal to 100 times 1.03. And that would be equal to $103, right? So 3% of 100 is $3. And so by doing this calculation, we added that $3 to our $100 payment from the previous period. And then for our next payment after this, we would take 3% of 103 and add that to 103 and we would have the amount of our next payment. It would continually increase. And so if we were to write these on our timeline here, for some payment X, the next payment would be X times 1.03 and the next payment would be X times 1.03 squared. And it would continue on from there. But we could also have a rate where our payments would decrease over time. So we could have a value of R such as negative 0.03, right? Every payment period, you are going to pay 3% less than you did in the previous period. And so in that case, our quantity would be one minus 0.03. And so we would be multiplying by a quantity of 0 0.97 every period. And so if we were to write that up on our timeline, we would have our original payment X, and then you would have X times 0.97 and then X times 0.97 squared for your next payment and that would continue on. And so these different series of payments are all examples of an annuity that has a geometric progression. And so what if we wanted to find the present value or the future value of a series of payments like this where that original payment X is changing by a rate of R? Well, we have a four step process that we can use. We're going to value each payment at their valuation date. Then we're going to factor out the first term of that series of payments. And then we're going to rewrite the remaining factor as a sum or geometric series. And then finally, we will compute our answer. And so let's take a look at going through this process step by step by starting with calculating the present value for a geometric annuity. All right, so for example, let's say we wanna find the present value of a series of payments where the payments are made at the end of each year for 10 years starting one year from today that increase by 5% each year with an annual effective interest rate of 7%. And then I've got our four step process down here for us to reference as we go through this problem so you can see how we're going to calculate this geometric annuity. And so our rate R that our payments are changing is right here. We are told that the payments are going to increase by 5% each year. And so I'm just going to write that down. We will have that R is equal to 0 0.05, right? That is what 5% is in decimal form. And then we also know that we have an annual effective interest rate of I, which is 7%. And so we'll have that I is equal to 0 0.07. And then one more thing, we know that we're going to be making 10 of these payments because we're making them each year for 10 years. And so we have that N or the number of payments is equal to 10. And so to get started with calculating this geometric annuity, we will begin with step one, and that is going to be to evaluate each payment at the valuation date. And so what that means is we're just going to write out a representation of our series of payments here. And so then I didn't specify in the problem the amount of our original payment. And so let's just say that our original payment X is equal to 50. We'll start with a $50 payment and then we'll increase it by 5% every year. And so if we write out our series of payments, we'll have that the present value in this case is equal to 50 and that's gonna be multiplied by V, the present value factor, right? This is our first payment because we're told that for these series of payments, the first one is made one year from today, 
right? And so that means that our first payment is made at time equals one, and we need to bring it to time equals zero. And so we're going to multiply it by the present value factor to the first power to bring it from time equals one to time equals zero. And then we'll add our next payment. We're gonna have $50, but this time we have to multiply by our inflation rate or one plus our inflation rate because now we're on our second payment or our second year and our payment of $50 is going to increase by 5%. And so we're going to multiply by 1.05 and then we'll multiply by the present value factor to the power of two. And that will take this payment from time equals two to time equals zero. And then we can add our third payment. We'll have plus 50. And then this time it's gonna be multiplied by 1.05 to the second power, right? This is our second payment that is going to increase or our third payment overall, and it's going to increase by another 5%. And so we square that quantity and then we'll multiply by the present value factor cubed. And that will take our third payment from time equals three to time equals zero. And so that's what this first step means here that we are valuing each payment at the valuation date. The valuation date for a present value is at time equals zero. And so that's why we're multiplying by each of these present value factors. And so then we could continue to add all of the payments onward until we have all 10 payments written out, but we could skip all the way to the end and we'll have plus, and then we'll continue to add them until we get to our last payment where we're going to have $50 times 1.05 to the power of nine times the present value factor to the power of 10, right? Notice that our first payment, we had 50 times V to the first power. So that means that our 10th payment would have the present value factor to the 10th power. And then notice that that quantity with the inflation rate or the rate at which our payment is changing is always to the power of one less than our present value factor, right? This was taken to the power of one, this was taken to the power of two, and one is one less than two. And then in our next payment, this was to the power of two, but this was to the power of three. And so two is one less than three. And so we have that same pattern over here where we have nine and 10. And so now we are done with the first step of our four step process. And so now we will move on to step number two. And so step two is factoring out the first term of our series of payments. And so that means whatever is in this first term here, we are going to factor that out of all of our other payments. And so if we do that for this scenario, we will have the following. We'll have the present value is equal to 50V times one, right? If we pull 50V out of itself, we're left with one plus 1 1.05 times the present value factor V to the first power, right? We pulled out this 50 and we pulled out one of these Vs because we're taking 50V out of each term. And then our next term will be 1.05 squared times the present value factor squared. We took out this 50 and one of these Vs. And then our last term will be 1.05 to the power of nine times the present value factor to the power of nine. And that is the end of our other factor. All right, and so that is all we had to do for step two in our four step process. We factored out the first term in our series from all the other terms to be left with that term times all of the other terms. And so now notice that what we have left here in this factor can be represented by a sum or a geometric series. And so that takes us to step three, which will look like this. We will have that the present value is equal to that 50 V times the sum from K equals zero to nine of 1.05 times V to the power of K, right? So each of these terms, if we were to go through with this sum, starting with zero and plug that in for this power K, we would get one. And then we'd have both those terms to the first power and then the second power and then the ninth power at the end. And so from the values from zero to nine, this sum is equal to this series of terms right here. And so the advantage of rewriting these terms in a geometric series is we have a formula to easily find the sum of a geometric series like this. And so just to remind you, we know that the sum from k equals zero to some value n of some value m to the k power, that is equal to one minus m to the power of n plus one divided by one minus m, right? This is the formula that lets us find the sum of a geometric series. And so in this case, our value of n is nine, and then our value of m is going to be 1.05 times the present value factor. So we're going to have one minus 1.5 times the present value factor to the power of n plus one, which will be nine plus one, so that'll be 10, 
and then we'll have one minus 1.05 times V in our denominator. And so if we use that formula on our sum, which brings us to step four, by the way, in our four step process, we are now on the compute stage. We are going to compute this present value. And so for step four, we have that the present value is equal to 50 times the present value factor times, and then we'll have that sum of one minus 1.05 times the present value factor to the power of 10 or n plus one. So that'd be nine plus one. And in the denominator, we have one minus 1.05 times the present value factor V. All right, so now we have something that we can calculate. We can take this expression and calculate it to find the present value of these series of payments. And so if we clean up our work here, this will be equal to 50 times, and now I'm gonna rewrite the present value factor to what it's actually equal to. That will be one divided by one plus the interest rate, which is 0 0.07. So we'll have 0 0.07 or 1.07 times, and then we'll have this fraction here, one minus, and then we're gonna have 1.05 divided by 1.07 to the 10th power, right? I just rewrote this present value factor which is one divided by 1.07 and multiplied it by 1.05. And so we have 1.05 divided by 1.07. And then in denominator, we'll have the same thing, but just to the power of one. So we'll have one minus 1.05 divided by 1.07. And so then if you plug this into your calculator, you will find that the present value is equal to $429.88. This is the present value of that geometric annuity. All right, and so this is a four-step process that you can use to solve any geometric annuity, whether that be for the present value or for the future value. In fact, let's look at an example of finding the future value of a geometric annuity using this four-step process because it will look a little bit different, but it's still going to work just like it did right here to get us a nice answer. And so let's look at that next. All right, so this time we're going to find the future value at year 10 of a series of payments made at the end of each year for 10 years that increase by 5% each year with an annual effective interest rate of 7%. And so all the numbers are the same here. This is the same exact problem that we looked at before, but instead we're looking to find the future value instead of the present value. And we're gonna stick with the same payment amount. It doesn't specify in the problem, but I'm going to stick with the amount that X is equal to 50. We're going to start with a payment of 50 and then it's going to increase every year by 5% or R equals 0 0.05. And so let's start with the first step of our four step process. And our first step is to value each payment at the valuation date. And so to do that, we will have that the future value is equal to our first payment of $50. So we're gonna have 50, and then we need to accumulate that $50 for the rest of those 10 years. Now be careful here, don't multiply this by one plus the interest rate to the 10th power, because note that these payments are being made at the end of each year for 10 years. And so that means that this first payment is being made at the end of year one, which means one year out of our 10 years is already up. And so that means we only have nine more years to accumulate interest for this deposit or for this payment. And so that means we'll be multiplying by 1.07 to the power of nine, right? One plus our interest rate to the power of nine for those nine years after that payment is made. And then for our second payment, we'll have plus 50, but this time that payment of 50 is going to increase by 5%. And so we need to multiply by 1.05, and then we will accumulate that for the next eight years, right? Because this payment is going to be made at the end of year two. And so there's eight more years for that payment to accumulate interest. And so we'll multiply by 1.07 to the power of eight. And so we can continue on to add up these payments. We could go on to our third payment and have 50 times 1.05 squared times 1.07 to the seventh power. But let's just skip to our last payment where we're gonna have 50 times 1.05 to the power of nine. And then we're not gonna be multiplying by the accumulation factor or 1.07 in this case, because for a future value, the valuation date is the moment that that payment is made, right? Right at the end of year 10, this payment is made and we are trying to find the future value at year 10. And so we don't need to multiply this amount by an accumulation factor. This is valued at the valuation date. All right, and so with that, we are done with step one of our four step process. And so let's move on into step two. And step two is to factor out the first term in our series of payments here. And so this time our first payment is 50 times 1.07 to the ninth power. 
And so we are going to pull this out of each of these terms. And so you might be a little confused by that because you don't see a 1.07 in the ninth power in each of these terms. This one only has it to the eighth power and this one doesn't have it at all. So how are we going to do that? Well, remember that if you have two values, x to the first power times x to the negative first power, that is equal to x to the power of one minus one, right? We add our exponents, so one plus negative one is one minus one, and that would be equal to x to the power of zero, which is equal to one. And so similarly, if we had x to the power of nine times x to the power of negative one, that would be equal to x to the power of nine minus one, which would be x to the power of eight. And so if you had the term x to the eighth power and you wanted to divide out x to the ninth power, you would be left with x to the negative first power, right? Because x to the eighth is equal to these two terms multiplied together. And so if you pull out this factor, you're left with this factor. And so that is the same case for our series of payments here. If we pull 1.07 to the ninth power out of 1.07 to the eighth power, we will be left with 1.07 to the negative first power. And if we pull it out of our last term here, where we don't even have it, technically we would have 1.07 to the zeroth power right there. If we were to pull it out of this term, we would be left with 1.07 to the negative ninth power. And so if we factor out that first term, the future value will be equal to 50 times 1.07 to the ninth power times one, right? We had pulled out of that first term and be left with one. And then our second term will be 1.05 times 1.07 to the negative first power. And then for our last term, we will have 1.05 to the power of nine times 1.07 to the power of negative nine. All right, and so now we have successfully factored out that first term to have that first term times the series of these values. And so in order to move on to step three, where we rewrite the remaining factor here as a sum or a geometric series, we're going to want to do one more thing, and that is to rewrite these terms because currently it's a little hard to see how we're going to make a geometric series out of these terms. But if we make these exponents positive by moving these quantities to the denominator, then we'll have a series of terms that we more easily recognize to be a geometric series. And so if we rewrite these terms, we'll have 1.05 divided by 1.07, and then we'll add up to our last term where we'll have 1.05 to the power of nine divided by 1.07 to the power of nine. And so now we can move on to step three and we can rewrite this remaining factor as a sum or a geometric series. And so we'll have that the future value is equal to 50 times 1.07 to the power of nine times the sum from k equals zero to nine of 1.05 divided by 1.07 to the power of k, right? So if k was equal to zero, which would be our first term, anything to the zero power is one, and so that would give us this first term. And then when k equals one, this would be taken to the first power, and so that would be this term. And then our last term where k is equal to nine, this whole quantity would be taken to the ninth power, which is what we have right here. And so now we have successfully rewritten our remaining factor as a geometric series. And so now we can move on to step four, which is to compute our future value. And so if we use that same formula that we used in our present value scenario, we can use that same formula and we'll have that the future value is equal to 50 times 1.07 to the ninth power times one minus 1.05 divided by 1.07 to the power of 10, right, n plus one, so you have nine plus one, and then one minus 1.05 divided by 1.07. And so if we clean up our work here and we plug this into our calculator, this will be equal to $845.64. This would be the future value of this geometric annuity where we start with a payment of 50 and each payment increases by 5% every year. All right, and so once again, this four step process will work for all geometric annuities. Whether you're looking for the present value or the future value, you can follow this process and find the value you are looking for every time. All right, and so with that, that's all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some example problems of calculating geometric annuities, feel free to check out our examples video that will be linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.